Today I'm going to make the chemicals benzoquinone and hydroquinone from some over-the-counter Tylenol. These are both very useful reagents in organic chemistry with benzoquinone functioning as an organic oxidizing agent and hydroquinone functioning as an antioxidant. Although benzoquinone has limited usefulness in this regard, hydroquinone on the other hand has a wide array of uses. For example, hydroquinone has a bleaching effect on human skin, which has led to its use as a treatment for hyperpigmentation with over 800,000 active prescriptions in the US. Hydroquinone is also used extensively in classic photography, easily undergoing amination with methylamine to make the photographic developer metal, which is one thing I plan to do with this chemical. On top of that, the deprotonated phenolate of hydroquinone easily undergoes orthoalkylation giving ethers and diethers. Similarly, it will easily undergo Friedel-Crafts reactions, which I plan to take advantage of to make the dye quinazarin. Anyway, to make this chemical, I first needed to isolate paracetamol from Tylenol, which is what you've been watching me do in the background. I've done this a few times so far on this channel, and I've generally found the best method very slightly depending on what types of additives are present in the pill. Generally, this is a two-step process where the paracetamol is first extracted by crushing the pills and soaking the powder in a solvent such as methanol or ethanol to leach out the paracetamol. The pill binder material can then be filtered off and the filtrate dried to leave a crude product which in a second step is recrystallized from water. My only note here is that if the pills contain starch, the first step must be done using room temperature solvent as the starch will hydrolyze and come into solution at elevated temperatures which is pretty annoying to deal with. Anyway, once I had finally filtered off my pure recrystallized paracetamol, I allowed it to dry and weighed it for a final mass of 43 grams, which is far more than I needed for this reaction. To begin the reaction, I first added 200 milliliters of 20% hydrochloric acid to a 1 liter beaker followed by 20 grams of the paracetamol. Without applying any heat and under constant stirring, I next added a small amount of 67% nitric acid, and allowed it to stir for a minute before adding any more. In total I added 40 milliliters of the nitric acid and the small additions are done to try and minimize the intensity of the inevitable reaction, which I'll try to explain quickly. Now, you may have noticed that the procedure so far is identical to my synthesis of chlorinyl, and in fact I did adapt this from my own synthesis. Just like the synthesis of chlorinyl from paracetamol, the first step would be the oxidation of the paracetamol as shown here, resulting in the intermediate N-acetyl-p-quinonamine. This is followed by the protonation of the amine nitrogen, which happens incredibly easily in acidic solution. This protonation destabilizes the carbon-nitrogen double bond as nitrogen really only readily forms three bonds. This results in a carbocation that easily binds to an available water molecule which would be instantly deprotonated to an OH group. At this point, both of the OH groups are deprotonated and benzoquinone is formed. When I synthesized chlorinyl, I used much more concentrated hydrochloric acid and high heat to then attach chlorine to the remaining aromatic carbons, while the more dilute acid and room temperature conditions allow the reaction to stop at benzoquinone. Now, looking back at the reaction, unfortunately, once it really got going, it still managed to be aggressive enough to nearly bubble over in my beaker. And if I do this reaction again, I guess I'll just have to use a 2 liter beaker. As far as I can tell, this bubbling is due to nitrogen oxides released upon the initial oxidation of paracetamol, but I'm still not entirely certain. Anyway, once the reaction died down, I went ahead and added the rest of the nitric acid and let the mixture continue reacting overnight. In all honesty, this was probably way too long and likely hurt my yield, but the reaction needs to go at least a few hours to go to completion, and when I got to this step it was going on midnight and I needed to be up for work at 6am. When I came back the next day, the reaction mixture had gone from a dirty brownish red to a more pleasant yellowish orange. To this, I added a bunch of ice cold distilled water before passing the mixture through vacuum filtration to collect my crude benzoquinone. This stuff had the same acrid burning odor as the chlorinyl I made, but was more of a light orange color while the chlorinyl was a sulfur yellow. Also unlike chlorinyl, this stuff will actually dissolve in organic solvents, and so for the next step I decided to recrystallize the benzoquinone. This was done by transferring the crude product to a beaker along with around 250 milliliters of 91% isopropyl alcohol. This was placed on my hot plate and brought up to a boil under constant stirring to dissolve the benzoquinone. I then took the beaker off the heat and placed it on an ice bath to crystallize the product, and unfortunately the solution here was too dark to record this happening. 
It's a shame too, because these crystals looked particularly beautiful once enough had formed to actually see them. Regardless, once the recrystallization mixture had cooled to zero degrees Celsius, I went ahead and broke up the crystals and collected them by vacuum filtration. These were next rinsed thoroughly several times using additional cold isopropanol. After pulling off as much liquid as I could, I transferred these crystals to a dish and vacuum desiccated them overnight. I then weighed my dry benzoquinone crystals for a final mass of 10.33 grams representing a 72% yield. This was pretty good, but again I feel this number would have been higher if I didn't let this go overnight. Now before I make this into hydroquinone, I want to quickly comment on the byproducts of this reaction. And to be completely honest, I don't actually know what they are. I did mess around with the recrystallization filtrate a bit, and I found that whatever it is, it's a deep orange, nearly red in organic solution, but a red, gummy, and nearly completely insoluble mess once it precipitates in water. I know benzoquinone isn't exactly stable in acidic solution, and since I let the reaction go over 16 hours when I had planned to let it go only 3, gave the benzoquinone ample time to break down. What I don't know, however, is what it breaks down into, or if this stuff could ever be useful in some way. If you've got any ideas, I would love to hear them in the comments. Anyway, to convert my benzoquinone to hydroquinone, I began by transferring it to a beaker along with 100 milliliters of methanol. This was allowed to dissolve using a bit of heat and constant stirring. Conversion from benzoquinone to hydroquinone is facile, and can be achieved very easily in acidic solution using a variety of reducing agents. The process happened so readily, in fact, that my benzoquinone product was a very light, somewhat greenish orange when it should have been a pure yellow. This is due to hydroquinone impurities which form a dark colored charge transfer complex called quinhydrone, which is very difficult to remove entirely. To that end, I decided that ascorbic acid would be more than sufficient to reduce my benzoquinone to hydroquinone, only to find that I had somehow ran out of the stuff. Luckily I happened to have some vitamin C tablets lying around which I crushed and mixed with water to extract the ascorbic acid. After a bit of stirring, the mixture was passed through a coffee filter to remove the pill binder material leaving me with an at least somewhat reasonably pure solution of ascorbic acid. This was simply dumped into my benzoquinone solution without any further processing, which immediately resulted in an intense darkening along with some noticeable bubbling. This darkening was almost certainly the result of the previously mentioned charge transfer complex between the benzoquinone and the hydroquinone, and given that it looks strikingly similar to the filtrate from my earlier recrystallization, I have something of a suspicion that my earlier filtrate may have contained a large amount of hydroquinone. This is further evidenced by the fact that hydroquinone is more soluble than benzoquinone in alcohols, but far less soluble than benzoquinone in water. I may test this later if there's any interest, but this video was done more of a proof of concept than anything, so I didn't really do much additional experimentation. Anyway, the solution eventually lightened up a lot as the last of the benzoquinone was reduced to hydroquinone. After allowing the two to react for about 20 minutes, I took the beaker off the hot plate and placed it in an ice bath to cool down to 0 degrees Celsius so that the hydroquinone could crystallize out. The crude hydroquinone was collected by vacuum filtration, rinsed thoroughly, and then transferred to a small beaker along with around 50 milliliters of distilled water. This was brought up to a boil to allow all of the hydroquinone to dissolve and then cooled down to freezing to crystallize it back out. The resulting crystals were again collected by vacuum filtration, dried, and weighed for a final mass of 4.83 grams representing a 46% yield from benzoquinone and a 33.2% yield from the paracetamol. This isn't great considering the reduction should have been a straightforward process, and I mostly blame my own sloppiness throughout the entire project. Because I was making every aspect of this up as I went, without drawing upon any literature or even outlining a procedure for myself beforehand, I kind of decided after recrystallizing my benzoquinone that my primary concern in this project was to successfully make the target chemical rather than to maximize yield. The result of this is that I lost a lot of product in excessively thorough rinsings, excessive recrystallizations, and sometimes sloppy transfer of product between beakers as I found myself running out of hours in the day. Despite all of this, I do consider this project a complete success. My benzoquinone product was reasonably pure with a melting point between 125 and 135 degrees Celsius and my hydroquinone was exceptionally pure with a melting point between 170 and 173 degrees Celsius. This was the proof of concept I wanted and I do have a few ideas of how this procedure could be improved. 
First, the initial oxidation in aqua regia should really only be conducted for about 3 hours, as going beyond this is not necessary and will actively decompose the benzoquinone. Second, the volume of methanol used in the conversion of benzoquinone to hydroquinone could be easily cut in half, and assuming that hydroquinone is the desired final product, I would simply reduce the crude benzoquinone from the initial reaction, rather than first isolating the benzoquinone. This is mostly because it introduces a completely unnecessary step, but also because any hydroquinone that co-formed alongside the benzoquinone would be lost to the filtrate in an isopropyl recrystallization. As a final note, you could theoretically use a pretty wide array of oxidizers instead of aquaregia to convert the paracetamol to benzoquinone. I briefly tried this using potassium permanganate and subsequently manganese dioxide in a dilute solution of sulfuric acid but I ended up scrapping both attempts due to the rapid darkening of the solution. However, this was before I made the connection that the dark color was likely due to the charge transfer complex between benzoquinone and hydroquinone, and in fact, it may have been working just fine. I really don't need more hydroquinone than I ended up making, but if you'd like to see me try this again using different oxidizing or reducing agents, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll give it a shot. In any case, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this video interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.